let's get into one of the silliest items on the docket for today, which is the idea that eating fruit is actually going to make you gain weight. Now, first, let's be real. The truth is that every food could make you gain weight. The question is whether the amount of food that you're putting into your body initiates what's known as a positive calorie balance or not. So what does this term energy balance mean? A simple way to think about it is that energy balance represents the difference between or the trade-off between the amount of energy that comes into your mouth versus the amount of energy that you expend. The amount of energy that you expend is broken into three categories. Number one is your basal metabolic rate, which determines how much energy does it cost to actually run your quote unquote basal metabolism if you were lying flat on your back for 24 hours. Number two is referred to as the thermic effect of food or TEF. And that refers to the amount of energy that it takes to actually digest the food that you consume. And the third is known as exercise. Exercise refers to the amount of calories that it takes to actually move your body during an exercise session or move your body on a daily basis. So if you sum together your basal metabolic rate plus the thermic effect of food, plus your exercise, you, you get your total energy expenditure, which is the total number of calories that it costs for you to run your biological machine. If you are in a positive energy balance, what that refers to is that the amount of energy that comes into your mouth from the food that you are consuming is greater than the amount of energy that you are expending. If you are in a negative energy balance, what that means is that the amount of food that comes into your mouth is less than the amount of energy that it takes to operate your biological machine. And if you are energy neutral or in a neutral energy balance, what that means is that the amount of calories that come in through your diet is exactly equal to the number of calories that you expend in your total energy expenditure. The reason I bring this up is because it doesn't matter what foods you eat, whether they come from the dairy world, the meat world, the refined carbohydrate world, or the fruit world. If you consume too many calories and you put yourself into a positive calorie balance, that means that the amount of energy that's coming into your mouth is greater than the amount of energy that you're expending and the chances of you gaining weight go up. But in order to really dial down this conversation, we have to get into another concept, which we've talked about at length on this channel, and we'll talk about it again, it's called calorie density. A quick summary here. Calorie density is a representation of how many calories are present in one pound of food. So butter lettuce, as an example, has a calorie density of 60 calories per pound, whereas olive oil has a calorie density of 4,000 calories per pound. So that represents the lowest calorie dense food that we know of and the highest calorie dense food that we know of. And all along the inside of the spectrum, you have a range of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and processed and unprocessed foods, along with red meat, white meat, chicken, fish, oils, and beyond. So another way to think about this is that calorie density is the concentration of calories in a food. Now, bagels, as an example, are more concentrated in their calories than our tomatoes, because with every bite that you take from a bagel, you are going to be gaining more calories than it would be if you took the same bite out of a tomato. So typically speaking, foods that are low in calorie density tend to have a high water and a high fiber content. These types of foods provide a very satisfying feeling of fullness without adding a significant number of calories that can contribute to weight gain in the long term. Now, some examples of these low calorie dense foods include things like vegetables and fruits and whole grains and cooked beans and legumes, or things like oatmeal, non-fat dairy products, believe it or not, and soy products, as well as very lean animal foods. So those foods are considered on the lower end of the calorie density spectrum. Foods that have a higher calorie density are often characterized by their dryness or their fatty nature. Despite occupying minimal space on your plate and minimal space inside of your stomach, these foods come with a high number of calories per bite and a high number of calories per pound, which then means with every bite, you increase the total number of calories that you're taking in more than you may think. So examples of these high calorie density foods include things like butter, oil, salad dressings, sugar, nuts, seeds, dry bread, dry cereal, crackers, egg yolk, avocado, dried fruit, red meat, and even items that are convenience items like egg McMuffins and pizza. So we recommend that in order to lose weight, that you keep your average calorie density to under about 700 calories per pound. And if you look at fruit, basically every single one settles somewhere between 135 and 420 calories per, per pound, which is exactly where we would like to keep it. So that's that range of calorie density between about 135 and 420 is below any meat product that you can find. 
as well as beneath the vast majority of common yellow light foods like processed breads. So you can take a look on the screen and you see that the green light foods on the left-hand side are mainly foods that come from the plant-based world, including things like butter lettuce, again, the lowest calorie density food on the scale, along with black beans, brown rice, sweet potatoes, bananas, and broccoli. These are just a few examples of foods that fall into the green light category that tend to be low in their calorie density. The yellow light category has other foods like brown rice pasta, gluten-free bread, dried fruits, almonds, dates. These tend to be a little bit higher in their calorie density and tend to be in the yellow light category because a little bit of these foods can go a long way. And finally, the red light category usually is the foods that have the highest fat content as well as the highest calorie density. And these includes shellfish like shrimp, as well as red meat like steak, white meat like chicken, fish like salmon, as well as processed foods like Oreos, and then the worst of all, oils with a calorie density greater than 4,000. So if you just ate approximately five to seven pounds of food per day, which is actually what research from Dr. Barbara Rolls' laboratory has shown conclusively, is that most people eat somewhere between five and seven pounds of food per day. So if you know that you're gonna be eating that on a daily basis, and you just tend to eat more fruits in substitution for other foods like meats and avocados and processed grains, you will by definition be eating less calories because you're moving slightly to the left on the calorie density scale, which means that for every bite and every, every ounce of food that you're consuming, you're taking on less calories. As a result of that, that's going to help induce a negative calorie balance. And the negative calorie balance is again where weight loss happens. And just to review, a negative calorie balance means that the amount of calories that are coming in your mouth are less than the amount of calories that you are expending. And weight loss is only possible in a negative calorie balance state. Don't you love it when biochemistry is pretty straightforward? It truly can be. Another factor that helps in determining the calorie density of food is called bulk. So bulk is a term given to the combination of water and fiber. And that occupies space in your digestive system, and it mechanically stretches your stomach and your small intestine and your large intestine. Now, bulk is actually one of the most important nutrients in your food because when bulk distends your stomach and your small intestine, your large intestine, there's a phone call and neurological signal that is initiated in your digestive system, which goes directly up to your brain, and it communicates with your brain to either slow or completely shut off your hunger signal. So you can think of it as that foods that are rich in fiber distend your digestive system. And as a result of that, the phone call that goes from your digestive system up to your brain into a region known as your hypothalamus is what enables your brain to recognize that there's something inside of your small intestine and inside of your stomach and large intestine. And as a result of that, it then responds by saying, you know what, I'm not going to eat very much food anymore because there's stuff inside of me already. Now, we recently covered a trend that millions of people are now following using the pharmaceutical medica medication known as Ozempic. And people are using this to lose weight rapidly. And in that video, we talked about the mechanism by which Ozempic can promote up to a 16% reduction in body weight over the course of about a year and why non-diabetic people are actually finding ways to get bootlegged Ozempic so that they can lose weight easily and they can lose weight quickly. Now, Ozempic has the same mechanism of, of action as bulk in that it initiates a phone call with your hypothalamus from your digestive system that tells your brain that you're full. But it does so by tricking your digestive system into thinking that it's actually full when it's not. So Ozempic is what's known as a GLP-1 receptor agonist, which means that it talks to GLP-1 receptors inside of your digestive system. And by doing so, it tricks those stretch receptors that are in the walls of your digestive system into believing that, there's actually, that they're actually being stretched, when in reality, they're not. And that initiates a neurological signal up to your hypothalamus, which is your apostat or your appetite center, to say, hey, could you slow down? There's stuff inside of me, which then leads to a reduced appetite and a dramatically improved or increased ability to lose weight. So if you want to watch that video about Ozempic, which I highly recommend, it might help change the way that you think about using medications to lose weight versus using food. Click either here or here or here to watch that video and really understand exactly what Ozempic is doing because the mechanism by which it works is very similar to the mechanism by which bulk works. And it gives you an opportunity to make a choice to say, okay, I'm either going to go down this route or I'm going to go down this route as my primary weight loss strategy. Now, because scientists believe that bulk is the most effective satiety signal that exists, 
the amount of bulk in your food is the most important determinant of how satisfied you're going to feel after you consume a meal. So the question that you get to ask yourself is this. If you're trying to lose weight, would you rather do it by eating foods that are rich in fiber, which will naturally talk to your hypothalamus? Or would you rather do it by injecting an expensive medication that tricks your digestive system into thinking that it is full so that it can initiate a call up to your hypothalamus to tell you that you're full? Guess what? Fruits are full of bulk which means that they're going to keep you full and they're going to distend your small intestine and they're going to distend your stomach and they're going to distend your large intestine and they're going to call your brain and talk to your hypothalamus and that's going to reduce your appetite and that's going to induce negative calorie balance. So this is part of the main reason why when people tell you that eating fruit is going to help you gain weight, it's actually not a true statement because fruit and many of its other plant-based counterparts are so rich in bulk, aka fiber and water, that the presence of the fiber in water is actually one of the most powerful satiety signals that has ever been discovered by scientists. So why are people trying to blame fruits for weight gain? One of the reasons might be that there's a fad that's circulating in the world today called the ketogenic diet. And I know that you've heard about the ketogenic diet because we've talked about it and it's all over the internet. And the ketogenic diet promises to deliver immediate weight loss by cutting your carbohydrate intake to less than 30 grams of net carbs per day. And while this initial, initial batch of weight loss does come usually somewhere on the order of two to three pounds per week for the first six to eight weeks, it also brings with it an increased level of insulin resistance, which has been shown to increase your overall chronic disease risk. So for the keto community, the fact that fruits are going to quickly make your diet, you know, unketo and get you out of the state of ketosis, people then think to themselves, okay, well, I'm not going to eat any fruit because if I do, then my keto diet is not going to work for me as well. Therefore, if I eat fruit, it's going to pop me out of ketosis. If I get out of ketosis, that's going to cause me to stop losing weight and or gain weight. And since I know that fruits are the equivalent of table sugar, well, then that's bad for my pancreas because it's going to cause my pancreas to in increase the amount of insulin it, promote, uh, it, it secretes, which is going to cause an insulin spike. And that is going to then cause weight gain. As you can probably put together at this point, that argument that I just presented is wrong, 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 wrong in many ways. I know it sounds like a reasonable explanation for why eating a ketogenic diet is the right choice, but the problem is that so many of these arguments are not grounded in actual scientific literature that it becomes a story that sounds good, but in reality, it's not the right biological explanation and it's not biologically accurate. Now, remember, it's not the fault of fruit that's causing problems when you have insulin resistance. It's the total amount of fat in your diet that caused insulin resistance to begin with, especially saturated fat. If you're insulin resistant, you've created an environment where eating fruit will increase your blood glucose and stimulate excess insulin production. So rather than eating less fruit, the goal is actually to become less insulin resistant. And that in turn is going to increase your carbohydrate tolerance and enable you to eat more fruit. So what's the final verdict in this case? Because I know this thing can get very confusing, okay? The final verdict is this. Fruit does not cause weight gain unless you're eating too many calories and you're operating in a state of positive energy balance for either weeks or months at a time. And secondly, if you gain weight from eating fruit, you're likely living with insulin resistance and that you're going to benefit from reversing the insulin resistance phenotype. It's not because fruit is some sneaky heavyweight boogeyman that's wrecking your hopes and dreams of being at your ideal body weight. It's because in your basal metabolic state, you're living with an advanced level of insulin resistance, and that is causing a metabolic traffic jam, which then makes it very easy to go into positive energy balance, which then creates an easy possibility of gaining weight. Hi. I'm Cyrus Kambata, co-founder of Mastering Diabetes. Now, all the health science on the internet today can make your head spin, right? Well, guess what? It makes my head spin. 
especially when you're trying to apply real science to your life to change your life for the better. I'll be the first person to tell you that I get frustrated with most of the nonsense that I see online about how to lower your blood sugar and how to lose weight. I've been studying the ins and outs of nutritional biochemistry for more than 20 years. And I have a PhD in the subject of insulin resistance, which means that I've read more than most humans will ever read on this subject. The reason why this is important for you is because my team and I have created a coaching program, which is backed by real science that has helped real people just like you really reverse insulin resistance and do it for good. And make no mistake about it, insulin resistance is the one thing that will make your blood glucose hard to control today, hard to control tomorrow, and hard to control years into the future. So it's absolutely essential that you understand exactly what insulin resistance is, what causes it to grow, and how to get rid of it using your food as medicine. Now we've assembled a team of expert coaches. We're talking dietitians, nurses, and certified diabetes educators. And they're all here for one reason, to help you master diabetes and achieve your ideal body weight permanently. Now, if you want average health or you don't mind being frustrated controlling your blood sugar, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, and your body weight every day, then this personal coaching program is not for you. But it is for you if you wanna have the best health that you've had in years to fully reverse insulin resistance, regardless of whether you're living with type one, type 1.5, prediabetes type two, or gestational diabetes. This personalized coaching program can change your life permanently. And we know that because it's changed the lives of more than 10,000 people that we've worked with directly and the number goes up every day. To get started, just visit masteringdiabetes.org start and answer some questions about yourself. Then schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who will show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using this exact method. It's important for you to answer all of the questions to the best of your ability because we wanna be able to help you assess whether you're a good fit for a personal coach. We have a limited number of spots available and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.